Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and today I'm partnering with my friends from Inventables to show you how I designed and created these DIY plyometric boxes using my X-Carve CNC. I've had my X car for about three years now, and ever since then, my husband has been suggesting that we build plyometric boxes for at home workouts. I even designed them in the easel software from Inventables, but never actually followed through with anything else. With sports being on hold and gyms being closed, I figured what better time than the present to finally build this project. The plyo boxes are a great tool for workouts, and there's a variety of exercises you can use them for. To design a plyo box, open up the free easel software from Inventables. You can find a link for it to create an account in the description below. You're going to go ahead and resize your work area. In this case, I set it to 30 by 30 inches and then set the material thickness to 3 quarters of an inch. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll click on the Apps tab and then use the BoxMaker Classic tab. In the BoxMaker app, you'll be able to set the width, height, and depth of your project. I'll go ahead and set it to the smaller box size of 16 inches wide, 14 inches high, and 12 inches deep. I set the tab length at 6 inches and the material thickness to 3 quarters of an inch, then click Import. Click the button to leave the design the original size, then scale down the screen so you can see all of the box pieces. Because this box is smaller, you can fit 3 pieces onto a 30 by 30 inch piece of plywood. For larger boxes, you may only be able to fit one or two pieces, or you can cut your wood to just larger than the piece and save on any excess waste. I added a second tab and moved the remaining pieces over to it. You can either cut and paste or copy and paste, then go back and delete the pieces you copied. You'll want to add dog bones to the inside corners to make sure the joints can fit tightly together. Highlight all of the pieces and then go back to the apps tab Click on the Dog Bone Generator app and then click Import. It will duplicate your current pieces, but this time with dog bones. Move those out of the way and delete your original box pieces, then move the new pieces over to the work surface. Follow the same steps for the other three pieces in the next tab. Since a bit is obviously round it's also, and also an eighth inch thick, the inside corners will not be a sharp 90 degree angle. The dog bones essentially create a relief area which allows the joints to fit tightly together. Next up are the handles. Use the shapes tool and select the circle shape or you could even use the square. Resize the shape so that you get an oval or a rectangle in the desired size. In this case I used 5 inches by 1.5 inches. Change the cut path from fill to cutting on the outside path and also make it a full thickness carve. Unclick the Use Tabs box, and then select both designs and center them over each other. To add the handle to the other piece, copy the box piece and handle and paste them on the other tab, deleting the old piece. This ensures that your handles are placed exactly at the same on both sides. One important thing to remember is to make sure that all of your box pieces are set to cut on the outside path in order for them to fit together nicely. If you'd like to add sizing to your box, click on the text tab and choose a font. Position the text where you'd like the size to be, and then change the text to whatever the height and piece of the box will be. Size the numbers accordingly and position where you'd like them to go. I set the depth of the carve to about 1 16th of an inch. Next up, create an arrow using the shapes tool. First start with a rectangle and size it down. Add in a triangle and position it over the rectangle. Select both shapes and right click, then select combine to turn both shapes into a single arrow. Size and position the arrow to align with the size and position of your number and set the carve thickness to match. Copy and paste the number and arrow to the other box pieces in the tab and adjust the number to match the size of the box piece. Finally, adjust the tabs on each of the box pieces so that the tabs aren't set in any weird places that could make them hard to cut free and sand later. Then your project is ready to carve. I started first on the smaller box, cutting a piece of scrap Baltic birch down to size to fit on the wasteboard of my X carve. I clamped it down, then set it up to carve.
The bit I'm using for this is an 8th inch down cut bit, which I love because it delivers a beautiful carve without fraying the top edges of the plywood. The downside is that it does collect a lot of sawdust in the lines of the carve, and the dust shoe just can't get it out. Once all of the pieces of the box were carved, I separated them from the outer piece of plywood and sanded them down smooth with 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. I fit the pieces of the box together and then grabbed some clamps to hold the pieces in place while I attached them with screws. I used a countersink bit and pre-drilled pilot holes over every area where the boxes joined together, then added one and a quarter inch wood screws. I took the clamps off, flipped the box to the opposite side, and followed the same steps. Once the opposite sides were attached, the box held together and I could finish adding screws to the remaining sides. For the larger box, the pieces were large enough that I had to cut my wood down to individual pieces for each side of the box. I cut the plywood down with my track saw, then cut it in half on my table saw. I clamped the piece down to my wasteboard and began carving out each piece of the box. While the first piece was carving, I cut out the remaining pieces of plywood and had them ready to go for when their turn was up on the X carve. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I've had my X carve for about three years now and have created several projects with it. I've even created a playlist of X carve videos that I've put together that you should definitely check out. I've also included links in the description to the Inventables website for this project, as well as the link to sign up for a free easel design software account. It's super simple to use and you don't even have to own an X carve to get started with designing. While the remaining pieces were carving, I got a head start on separating the waste plywood from the box sides and sanding them down. Once the entire box was ready to be assembled, I clamped it together, then pre-drilled my countersunk holes and attached all of the pieces with one and a quarter inch wood screws. You can use either regular wood screws or deck screws, whatever you happen to have on hand. To make the sizes more visible on the box, I grabbed a paintbrush and some acrylic paint and painted the carved portion. Using the design tutorial I shared, you can create plyo boxes in a variety of different sizes. I originally designed two expecting that my youngest son wouldn't be able to reach the max height on the bigger box, but he quickly proved me wrong with his vertical leap. I know my husband will be excited to utilize these for our at-home sports training sessions. For more tutorials just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also check out some of these other videos using the X-Carve.